started doing print on demand back when I was completely broke. And over the past couple of years, I've been able to do well over a million dollars and generate multiple six figures in profit. My journey has not been easy, but there's been a lot that I've learned along the way that might help you if you're looking to start your own online business. Today, I'm giving you the nine tips that helped me go from literally zero to grow what's approaching a multiple seven figure business. If you implement these tips early on, I promise that you'll at least have a better chance of succeeding and getting what you want. So without further ado, let's get into tip number one, which is building and keeping momentum. When I first started out, I would spend months watching videos just like these, feeling like I was making progress because I was learning, when in reality, those were months that I could have spent growing my business. My problem wasn't that I didn't have enough time, money, or information. It was that I didn't have any momentum. Momentum takes challenging things, which are just basically things that you don't understand yet, and makes them feel way easier. Before you even get started, you'll have a thousand questions and concerns that'll hold you back. But you have to start moving in the right direction before you can start answering those questions, build out a business plan, worry about a logo and all these tedious little things. As silly as it sounds, the easiest way to get started building momentum is to sign up for all of your accounts. It'll take you less than an hour and you only have to do it once. Sign up for a new Gmail account and then use that email address to sign up for all of the associated accounts. I've got this linked down below so you can follow each link super easily if you want. Otherwise, you can just visit each website on your own. It is a baby step, but if you can take enough baby steps, they'll eventually compound enough to build enough momentum to carry you to the things that will actually make you money. Now, this is going to upset some people, but especially early on, it's a huge waste of time to be repurposing your designs. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a lucrative and good strategy, but the first designs and products that you make aren't going to be good. If you upload your very first designs to t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, and mugs, you're probably just wasting time uploading your designs to all of those products and wasting money on all the listings. You still should post your bad designs, but instead you should pick one product and make that your entire focus. This is one thing that I actually did get right when I first started out. I just picked one product and kept trying with it until I could get it to sell. I would just go to the best sellers page on Printify and focus on strictly one of these products until you can get to the point where you're making about $10,000 a month. Once you can hit $10,000 a month, it means that you have designs that can sell. Then you can take those designs and do what this shop called OTZ Shirts has done. This is a great example of repurposing done well. I've talked about this shop before and he's done around $2.8 million from selling the apparel. Now the owner of this shop does something really clever. He takes his best designs from his apparel shop and uploads them onto mugs in his second shop. So what he's done is gone from 2.88 million to 3.68 million by repurposing the same designs onto mugs. And this has worked super well because he has great designs. So whether you're selling on eBay, Etsy, or Shopify, start with one product, make that your entire focus until you can get it to about $10,000 a month, and then worry about repurposing those designs onto other products. Doing this made me successful a lot faster because I was able to master selling one product. But one thing I definitely didn't do right was offering way too many options for the customer. I get it. It's tempting to want to sell all of the wonderful color options to sell to your customers. The more color options, the more sales you get, right? No. Instead of your customer's excitement over all of the color options that you offer, they'll just get choice overload. You want a customer to see the blue option and buy it. Posting four shades of blue will just confuse them and make it hard for them to pick their favorite. So you have to decide for them. They'll tell themselves that they'll just buy it later once they've made up their mind and they'll never come back. And on top of giving your customers choice overload, the print providers that offer a ton of color options have a hard time keeping them all in stock. And if it's out of stock and someone still orders it, that order gets sent to another print facility if they have it in stock. Or you'll have to deal with the customer and ask them if they want a different color. Both of those situations are not optimal. The easiest fix to this is simply to offer less than 12 colors. If you offer more than 12, fewer people who see your listing are actually going to buy. And the easiest way for you to pick what colors to sell is to first pick which print provider you wanna use. Now from the profit that you take home to your customer satisfaction, 
choosing the right print provider will make or break your business. Now with Print On Demand, you'll work with a company like Printify who provides you with white label products like these. You simply pick one of the products and upload some kind of design to it, whether that be text, an image, or an AI design, and then you'll list it for sale in your storefront with a nice mock-up. On Printify, when you choose the product that you're selling, you're presented with many different print provider options. This is because Printify doesn't print and ship any of the items. Instead, they'll just connect you with one of these print providers who can. Now, each of these print providers can offer different prices, colors, sizes, and they operate differently from one another. Since each print provider is independent, they are not created equal. Things like quality control, average production time, and stock reliability also play a huge role in your business. On paper, these two centers might look very similar, the Dream Junction just being a little bit more expensive. The thing is, come Christmas time, and you'll be looking at poor stock reliability and production times of seven plus days with the Dream Junction before the orders even ship out. Monster Digital maintains a one to three day production time year round and they keep great inventory. For selling apparel, I only use Monster Digital. This also limits my size and color options, making it easier for me to decide what I'm gonna sell. Now I can tell you that because I've been through three holiday seasons already, but if you're selling a different product or in a different region of the world, then I'll leave some more recommendations down below. Or you could chat with a Printify specialist by clicking on Snappy in the bottom left corner of a Printify page and you can ask them which print provider is best for you. If you're curious about other print-on-demand companies, I've already done a quality and cost comparison video, and for the reasons that I give in that video, I only use Printify. Now, everything that I've mentioned up until this point doesn't matter at all if you don't understand storefront context. The best way I can explain this is you don't go to LinkedIn to watch TikTok videos, hopefully. Your product listings need to be relevant to the storefront that you're posting them on, and there's two ways that you can do this. So I searched eBay and Etsy for the exact same thing. And just by looking at these funny t-shirts, you should be able to see a noticeable difference. Good Etsy shops have images that bring the designs to life and make each shirt look handcrafted. And eBay shoppers just don't care that much. A good Etsy image kind of looks out of place on eBay. And we'll talk about Shopify and private websites in a second. All of the platforms work and there's no right or wrong way but delivering your designs in a way that fits the storefront will generate you the most amount of sales. Now, the second factor is getting traffic. You're either going to be doing organic SEO, which includes making content if you're into that, or by paying for traffic with ads. This determines your budget and also changes how many designs you'll need to make for each interest. To do well at organic, you have to post a lot of designs per interest. So 25 fishing shirts, 25 skydiving shirts, and so on. This is the cheapest way. I cover an easy way to do this in my design tutorial. You could post a thousand designs to eBay or Etsy for $200, and that allows you to target 40 different interest groups with 25 designs each. Doing that also makes you way better at designing. If you're paying for ads, you don't want to have as many designs per interest group because then you're just paying to promote your good and bad listings instead of just letting organic search filter them out for you. You'll want to know which designs are good before you start paying for ads. And to do that, you can either buy designs or you can use the organic method and then just run ads to the products that start selling and not all the other products. The organic strategy allows you to get better at making designs without losing money on running ads. It's slower and I know most of you won't want to do it, but it works. As you start posting those first thousand products, some of them will start to sell and you'll start making back the money that you're spending posting the products. Now where this really gets unlocked is some of your designs will start selling regularly. When that happens, you can take those best selling designs and use them to start a Shopify store. You already have designs that sell and you know who your previous customers are for those products and you can run ads to a Shopify store with those winning products. And you may or may not be able to use your previous customer data to run targeted ads to people with similar interests. Hopefully you can see how this is the cheapest and safest way to scale your business. Now tip number seven is just to open a PayPal credit card. Before Dave Ramsey puts me on his blacklist, 
I do not recommend opening up a credit card until you understand how badly credit card debt can screw you. If you're not careful, you'll end up paying like 20% more on everything that you buy. A $100 purchase becomes $120 worth of debt very quickly. But if you're a careful and competent individual, I'd highly recommend the PayPal credit card. You can use it with Printify and it gives you 3% back on all the money that you spend. So when I spend about half a million this year, I'll get about $15,000 of tax-free cash back that I can use on whatever I want. I've used the Amex and the Sapphire cards and the business cards, and this one is so much better. It's just straight cash back and you actually get more rewards by using it. Now, number seven is something that I wish I could have started sooner because I easily could be making an extra five to $10,000 a month. And that's just by growing an email list. It not only increases your profit, but it also makes that jump from eBay or Etsy to Shopify a lot easier. When I was first starting out, I wasn't entirely sure that I was going to be able to make it, so I didn't have that long-term thinking. Now, I saw this article covering return on investment for email marketing, and top performers in retail and e-commerce can make $45 per dollar spent. That's a 4,500% return, for collecting an email address. Obviously, this is probably a high-end return, but still. I recently started doing this, and Allura makes it super easy to do, so hopefully I'll be able to have a discount code down below this video. Number eight is something that I wasn't able to do when I got started because it wasn't an option, but you're leaving time and money on the table if you're not leveraging AI. I see people saying AI steals from artists, people saying that it's just you being lazy, but regardless, there's AI tools coming out for everything that you can think of, not just making designs. Plus there's AI coming out to fix all the controversial issues like Adobe Firefox, where creators can choose if their art is used by the AI or not. Even from what I've been able to do with my existing business, outside of creating designs and the things that we talk about on this channel, there's potential to 10X your output in all kinds of areas if you look for it. Tip number nine is the one that nobody wants to hear, which is why I've saved it for last to hopefully salvage this video's performance. I gotta get that ad revenue, you know? I saw this comment on a video yesterday and he said that he's coming up on two months with 40 items posted, 250 views, no sales, and what a waste of time this was. And that comment actually reminded me of myself back when I was working my first job at Noodles & Company. It was a minimum wage job, I was making $7 an hour, and I vividly remember getting my first paycheck deposited into my account and just thinking, I need to make more money. The thing that I didn't realize about getting a pay raise was you had to learn the entire new position learn all of the skills associated with that position and work a couple months in that position before you ever even got the pay raise. Now I went through this process anyway because I didn't have another option. And what ended up happening? I ended up getting the pay raise. Now I'm really grateful that it was structured that way. Besides initially getting hired, I was only paid for the skills that I had. Business is the exact same way because you'll only get paid for the skills that you already have. Starting a business is like getting a job, except you have to show up, learn all of the skills and work for free before you ever even get hired. And a lot of people don't wanna do that. I was able to take that same lesson I learned at Noodles and look at what successful shops were already doing. I saw that they had huge amounts of listings in their stores, so I decided that I would post 4,000 listings to my shop before I would even critique myself or worry about how much money I was making. This mindset allowed me to learn the fundamental skills that I needed to work the position before I made the money. Once I learned everything, the money started coming. When I get comments about clickbait or people saying that it doesn't work, the process is extremely simple. It's cheap and low risk. It takes way longer than you think it will. And most importantly, it's extremely boring to do. The implementation is the only difference between us. The process will work if you do.